Hey, good morning. This is Meg Lansky with the Driving Markets, driving while talking about markets. Okay, let's have a look at what was driving markets yesterday. We'll do a quick wrap on where the indices were in the US overall. The US was down, or the Dow was down 232 points at 32,656. The Nasdaq was down 11 points at 11,455. And the S&P was down 11 points at 3970. I had to remember that one. Uh, US 10 year Treasury is running at 3.92%. Remember, I've called the Treasury 4.6%. I've called it 4.6% by June. And the, um, the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were slightly down as well yesterday. Okay, so February closed out in a negative uh, number. Okay, so the overall markets were down during February after having a blitz of a fantastic January contrary to my opinion I did say if you look back I thought January would be a negative month and I was wrong hands up I've got to admit I was wrong I didn't get it right January was wrong but I did say that markets would end up being sold off in my opinion in February they were sold off in February and yesterday the final day of the month they were sold off in the last hour they're completely sold off okay now what's driving those is obviously the fear of inflation interest rates however digging deeper within the actual um, numbers Goldman Sachs was the biggest loser at 3.8% because what they've come out with is they've stated they want to look for alternative investment strategies and that sent fears in the market that the existing uh, business plan the existing model is simply not working if the model was working and producing the profits that they need to uh, produce and report for their shareholders, then they wouldn't be seeking, seeking alternative investment strategies. So the shares were down 3.8%. Um, now, interestingly enough, um, Salesforce was also down. Obviously, Nasdaq was slightly down yesterday. Um, Michael um, McNaughty, no, is it, um, I can't remember his name. Um, Wow, I'll come back to that one. I just can't remember the name, uh, the actor's name. McNaughty, but it's not Michael. I can't remember. If someone can mention what his name is. He gets paid $10 million a year by Salesforce to be a creative designer. He's a Hollywood actor. What's his name? Michael? That's not Michael. And now, someone correct me when I come to that. I'm sure you send me the name. Um, but he gets paid $10 million to be a creative designer. And he's a Hollywood actor for Salesforce. That's an unusual one also. Just a little point I thought I'd throw in there. No association whatsoever to driving markets. Okay, getting back to the actual markets where we're at. So you have, um, you have the Nasdaq slightly down. Okay, now in terms of foreign exchange, you had the dollar was slightly stronger against the pound and the euro, weaker against the yen. Remember, I've been calling dollar yen up to 140, 145. Those of you who have missed the last rally back in November, all the way to just over 150, this was an opportunity to get back in at 129, 130, and it's still probably going to rise simply because of the divergence between interest rates in the US and interest rates in Japan. Next one I want to focus on is euro dollar. I sincerely believe, and looking at it, looks like euro dollar is going to fall below one, one, one on one par. Okay, so the moment's running at 105 and a half. I've got a feeling that the euro is going to go down against the dollar. Several reasons: the euro is in the re the euro zone's into recession. They've got high inflation rates, and they're going to have probably rising unemployment. Uh, whereby the U.S. doesn't have rising unemployment. Uh, but does have rising interest rates. So the rising interest rates make it the dollar more attractive to invest in than the euro. I can't see the eurozone increasing. I don't think they've got the actual uh, the gumption to start increasing interest rates significantly, even though they probably need to get to 5%. I can see the eurozone increasing it by another 100 basis points, but I can't see them doing it beyond that because it would cause too much hardship amongst all of the member states. Remember, not all the member states are as strong as Germany and France. They're the two powerhouses within Europe. The other states, especially Eastern Europe, with their raging inflation, by the way, they've got, Eastern, if you measure Eastern Europe, they've got inflation running at 10, 11, 12% or even higher. Where Europe, the, the, uh, Europe, which is Western Europe, has got um, inflation running at about the five, six to 7%, if I'm correct. Germany's got about 8%, 8%, 8.2%. Have to check those numbers. 
not 100% certain there's others, but that's about the average on inflation, okay? Um, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, again, it's hanging around there at 23,000, 23,300, 23,700. Um, not sure where it's going. Again, it may test the 25,000, but overall, I think it's going to trend down. I think these cryptocurrencies are going to trend down as well. Housing sales in the US came in lower than expected. Um, housing, housing, um, housing increases so the price increases have dropped off and you could see a further fall in house prices over 2023 i believe that house prices in the uk in the us and other western countries will fall around about 20 percent over the next 12 months remember house prices lag stock markets okay but as rates rise it's going to bite more into the pocket of the householder and eventually people are not going to buy houses because they can't afford the actual mortgages okay 10-year treasury yields i said i mentioned that i think they're going to go to 4.6 percent and the reason being is quite simple that with higher inflation or rising inflation in the u.s and rising interest rates then bond yields will move a lot higher okay that's more or less it for now from driving markets subscribe share comment um speak to you soon